Joshua chapter 6, verses 1 through 21. That's where we're going to be looking. And I'm not going to read through all the scripture. I'm going to be reading just what I need to read tonight. But it's about how to make your walls fall down flat. How to make your walls fall down flat. You know, it's been a little while since we've had a service. It's been a couple of weeks. But if you remember a little while back, we talked about some different things concerning the Israelites. And at this point in Joshua, Israel has already crossed the river Jordan. And as you notice, when they got over the other side and they were ready to go to battle, God said, wait a minute, you've got to prepare yourself spiritually for that battle. So tonight they're ready to go on in, they're ready to step in there and they're, start, they're ready to inherit that land flowing with milk and honey, that land that God has promised them for a long time. And for Israel, the thing that's standing before them is Jericho. They haven't fought the battle of Jericho yet, but they're about to. And for Israel, if they take the city of Jericho, man, that's going to give them a, foot, a good foothold in the land of Canaan. If they take that city, then they're pretty much going to run amok in Canaan land. So that's something that they've got to face there. Now, after we get through this point, we have to know some things. Because I believe this story will speak to us as well. How many of you believe that every day we're engaged in a spiritual battle? Every day. Not just one day, but every day. And how many of you would like to know that God can give you the victory through your battles every day? Anybody know that? Would you like to know how God is going to help you get through those battles? Would you like to know how God is going to help you conquer your enemy, whatever it is that you're going up against tonight? Would someone say, Amen, if you'd like to know? Amen. How many of you are facing a battle right now? Anybody? Facing a battle. Look at the battles. The older I get, the more I realize that life is about one battle after another. One battle after another. And sometimes we have all these battles that we're fighting together. How do we get through these situations? We need to know that we have a God who is victorious. We have a God that is all powerful. In fact, the battle that we're about to celebrate on Easter has already been won. Isn't that wonderful? But whoever said life was like a, ro a, a rose garden? You know, how, how many of you believe that once you got saved, my problems were going to go away? I was just going to be absolved from all difficulty, all trouble. This is what I think. I think that living life without being a Christian is like driving a chuck wagon or an AMC pacer down the road of life. Now, you can either try to live life driving an AMC pacer or you can be a Christian and drive through life in a Cadillac. Or, or, a, or a Mercedes Benz. That's how you get through life with God. Because God's going to help you through whatever battles and victories that you have. So I want to take this story and I want to show you how you can get through these obstacles and these bar uh, barriers in life. One of the first things in verse 1 is that when, when Israel got prepared, when they prayed and readied themselves for battle, they knew that their problem was going to be the city of Jericho. They were ready for battle. How many of you have heard bombs going off all week? Airplanes flying overhead, helicopters, people, you know, roping off people's roofs and whatnot. Soldiers getting ready for battle. They're training to go, you know. These soldiers have been trained now. And they followed God's instruction right to the T. They're ready to go. And now here they are. They're standing before the great city of Jericho. Could have been as many as a million men. This is a big army we're talking about. But you know what they haven't ever seen before? And I want you to put yourself in their shoes just for a minute. You know what you've been through the last 40 years since you've left Egypt. Now you've crossed the Jordan. Here's this city. It's ahead of you. It's not just a city that you can look out there and see the skyscrapers and the apartment buildings, McDonald's and whatever, you know. It's a city that's got walls. This is the first time they had ever seen a wall. This is the first time an Israelite had ever known what a wall was or seen a city fortified by a wall. And they've got to go up against this thing. This is their problem. Let me tell you just a little bit about their wall. The outer wall was six feet thick. The outer wall. And it was about 20 feet high. 
There was an inner wall that was 12 feet thick and 30 feet high. And between those walls was a space of 15 feet. And that space was heavily, heavily guarded by soldiers. And Israel's problem was that they had to go conquer that city. That was their obstacle. That was what they were going to fight up against. Now think about that. Imagine driving into Shreveport one day and you don't see the big buildings and the horseshoe and you don't see all those big pretty buildings there, but you see this big wall. And God's telling you, go conquer that city. How am I going to do that? Can you imagine how they must have felt? Standing there before that big fortified, impenetrable, impossible to penetrate wall city. Wow. How must they have felt? Can you imagine what was weighing on their hearts? As they were getting ready for battle. What kind of obstacles are you facing? That seem insurmountable. <coughs> impossible. Impenetrable. Finances. Relationships. Disease. Health conditions. Spiritual conditions. And you don't think there's any way through them. There's no way. And that problem is keeping you from enjoying your Canaan, your peace, your happiness. You don't know what to do. I'm pretty sure a lot of them felt that way too. But they had a promise. And their promise was that they had God on their side. God on their side. I want to talk to you about the promise. And this is what the Lord says in verse number 2. Remember, they're standing there looking at this big city. And God tells Joshua this. See, I have handed Jericho over to you, along with its kings and soldiers. Ha! How about that? I know why they do that. They do that to wake you up. Ha! Soldiers. Ha! What is he saying to them? See, I've handed Jericho over to you, along with the king and soldiers. We haven't even gone and surrounded this building yet. We haven't even started the battle against them yet. And you're telling me we already have the victory? That's what he's telling them. And that's a promise. That's his promise to them, folks. They had an obstacle. God's saying, the victory is yours. Go and get it. Go and get it. Folks, I believe that tonight, God wants you to know that he didn't call you to be saved so that you can live a defeated life. God didn't call you out of the muck and misery of your sin so that you could be defeated. Whatever the adversary, whatever the opponent, whatever it is, God has given you the victory. You know that spiritually. But every day a crisis will come up. Something will arise. And your faith is going to get you through whatever it is. Do you believe that? Amen. You believe God is strong enough to lead you through your Jerichos, through your walls? Let me tell you some of the promises that He offers you tonight. And you can look these up if you want to. They're in the Bible. He promises that the weapons that He gives us are powerful through God. Whatever power we need, He promises that they are, they are strong enough. He also promises that our ability to walk through these Jerichos are limited by our faith. Did you know that? Sometimes the keys to success is, is limited by the faith that we have. Do you believe that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you? Man, I like, like that little word, all. All things? All things. He promises power on that day of battle. He promises an ongoing victory. Not just a, a one-time victory, but an ongoing victory. He promises that we will never fight alone. What does He tell people there as He's about to ascend into the heavens as the disciples in 28.16? He says, I am with you. Always. Does He not? I am with you till the ends of the earth. I will never leave you nor forsake you. And we have the promises that when the battles are ended, we will celebrate in victory in His presence. One day, folks, we're all going to celebrate. Isn't that wonderful? We're all going to celebrate. Anybody say amen tonight? Amen. amen.